Hey, what's up guys? I am Josh with the Kunanen Lab. And here in today's video will be part four of the Kunanen Lab addiction series. <clears throat> and I'll just give a small recap of the last video. So the last video I spoke about my life in the age frame of 17 when I had graduated high school pretty much to 24 right when I had gotten sober. So, you know, I hit an all-time bottom within those years of my life. I hit all-time highs, though, as well. So it's, it's kind of crazy how it all worked and molded together. <clears throat> I spoke a whole lot about my Muay Thai experience and how it developed me, and then also how it broke me once I was going on that losing streak. And I was starting to break mentally in some of the, uh, the few fights that I had when I had got back to America from Thailand. So anyways, I'm gonna go right into this uh, part four video, which is basically starting of March 10th, 2018, which is the day that I had got sober from drugs and alcohol. So anyways, um, I, I was playing, you know, the boy who cried wolf once again, my life was falling apart. I reached out to my dad, which was already sober from drugs and alcohol for roughly seven years at the time. And he told me that he'll take me to this recovery program down the street and, you know, check it out, see, see what it's about and maybe see if this is something that'll work for me. And I was desperate and I was in need and I had no other options. At least that's what I felt like at the time. And I knew that my dad was living a much better life. And this is what he was active and involved with, which helped him create a better lifestyle for himself. And then all of us kids and the rest of the family as well, too. So, you know, I went down here and I ended up having a conversation with this guy. And he had just gotten like one year of sobriety at the time and was living a life active and involved in recovery. And he ended up sharing these words with me, something like he never thought that he could have this much fun and freedom in recovery from drugs and alcohol, but here he is one year later and he's having the most fun he's ever had in his entire life. Considering the fact that when he had first gotten there, he never thought that life would ever be fun or worthwhile being sober so I had that same underlying belief coming into this and when he had told me that for some reason it just really stuck with me and at that time I just had this really strong gut feeling like an inner tuition telling me that you know I think this is really going to work for me this time and I'm going to give it a shot so anyways I start you know, participating in this re recovery program, I get a mentor and I start taking the necessary steps in which are suggested. And um, I'm active and involved with this every single day. And I'm meeting with my mentor on a regular basis. And we are starting to have life conversations almost on a daily basis. And so the whole way that this process started to unfold for me and what helped me stay committed and stay attracted to wanting to commit myself to this was first off the mentor that I had picked. It was just a God given type of situation because the mentor that I found happened to just have a really similar, a, a really similar life situation as to what everything that I was going through at the time. And the thing is, is he already had went through these things. So he was sharing his life experiences with me. He was sharing his struggles and his successes. So basically he was sharing his problems, which were the same problems I was going through, but also a solution. And he was giving me advice on things that I might be able to implement into my life that could help me, you know, gain wisdom through my struggles and overcome them and, you know, see what it looks like on the other side. Because in my experience, you know, it is, the grass is greener on the other side. But the thing is, is it, it's a dark path, dark and lonely path to get to the other side sometimes. 
because it requires us having to face ourselves and realize who we became up to this moment. And it sucks because like the person who I became in the first 24 years of my life coming into recovery was just not very, not a very pleasant person. You know, I was really self-consumed. I was selfish and self-centered to the core. And it's not that I had bad intentions to, you know, take what I can from other people as much as possible and just leave them in the gutter. Like I wasn't necessarily raised like that, but that's just kind of where I was led to. But it was on a, it, I was just really unconscious of it at the time. And so the more that I spoke with this mentor, the more that he shared his life experience with me and the more that that I started to implement his suggestions, I started to clear out, you know, a lot of the wreckage from my past. I started to own up, or I started to become aware of my past mistakes, and I started to learn how to become accountable and own up to them and accept that those were the choices that I made, but I had the clarity at the time and even up to today that I no longer have to make those same mistakes because... <laughs> Even up to today, like I'm not saying I live my life based off of shame of what I've done in the past, but when I think about some of the things that I've done, it creates an uneasy feeling within me because I'm not proud of them. I have hurt a lot of people. I've made a lot of selfish and self-centered decisions that hurt other people. And <clears throat> I isolated my way away from my problems for so long. Like I'd mentioned in the last video, um, when I started training Muay Thai, I was like 18, 19 ish. And I started to use Muay Thai to numb all of my, my past mistakes and my pains and my childhood traumas. I never learned how to healthily go through them and walk through them and see what it's like on the other side. So when I got into recovery, I was no longer using something to numb myself. I was using recovery to face myself. But the thing is, is I wasn't doing this by myself. I had mentors in my life who I were consistently connecting with on a deep spiritual and intimate level and learning how to clear away the wreckage of my past. So addiction is a long and lonely road you know for many of us who get involved with drugs and alcohol to begin with it seems fun and i don't think anybody could disagree that we had a lot of good times when we were under the influence but the thing is is over an extended period of time we start to just all of that pain that we've caused to ourselves and others over over an extended period of time just starts to really build up and and it had an energy it just energy never dies it always just somehow it spreads its wings and flies whether that's in a good direction or a bad direction that's up that's up to us for the choosing and for me when i was active and involved in my addiction i just I ended up blowing up and I caused, like I'd mentioned once again, just a lot of wreckage. So being in recovery and learning how to deal with my own problems and learning a lot of healthier tools to utilize. And most of all, I found many different resources that I could use to help me go through this because it never works going through it alone. So the way that recovery works is, you know, we, we network ourselves around a bunch of other people who are trying to achieve a similar goal, you know, staying sober and living a better life that's well-rounded. So the more that we get active and involved with these people, the more that we're going to have find drive within ourselves to actually participate in our own life of becoming a better individual and being more productive into the world. So <clears throat> that's kind of all I wanted to explain. I just wanted to give like a little bit of an intro into my recovery. And this is probably in the first six months of my recovery. 
and you know there's a there's a lot more to the story but this is just basically the baseline of what it was like when i first got active and involved with re in recovery and started working with a mentor so i was really strongly driven when i first got sober because my life sucked so bad i was willing to do anything and everything to change so i i received a lot of benefits from practicing a lot of these suggestions fairly quick and you can too if you're willing to do anything and everything to to change so that's all i got for you guys in this video guys there's going to be another part to this video because like i mentioned i'm coming up on four years sober here in a few days on march 10th and that is just roughly like the first year of my recovery. So I want to touch a lot more subjects in the next video, but I'll catch you guys on the next one. Oh yeah, remember to like and subscribe down below at the Kunan and Lab and also follow my Instagram page at Kunan and Lab. I'll catch you guys on the next one.